Well, guys, apparently we lost a lot more than just that fucking game. <clears throat> Christian Kirk, who a lot of people thought was going to get traded within a week or two, ended his season with a broken collarbone, man. Prayers up to Christian Kirk. Like, I actually, th and see, I actually thought that Christian Kirk was a free agent at the end of this year, but actually he has another year left on his contract, but we saved $10 million by cutting him. Which, unfor which unfortunately, logically, that makes that makes sense. Even though the Jags aren't in any like serious cat trouble, but it makes some sense to do that when you know Parker Washington's on the roster. Now, I hope somehow they can restructure his contract and you know have him around for a few more years because I really like Christian Kirk. I think he's been good, but like I said, there's. Two big things going against that. Number one, other than that first year he's been here, he hasn't been healthy. Like, he, he's ended the year on IR twice now. So, that's not boding well for him. And then, um, and then, like I said, Parker Washington's on the roster. So, and you know, this kid, when he's gotten opportunities, he's stepped up. So, unfortunately... Chances of Christian Kirk being back, it's not good. And then BTJ, he has a rib injury. Like, at first it said he could be out, like, two to four weeks. But um, I also saw something, like, just recently. Like, I saw that report a couple, like, an hour or so ago. But then um, there was another report, like, right, actually right before I made this video, that saying, you know, his MRI came back clean. He's trying to get back on the practice field as soon as this week. All I'm going to say to that is um, if, he, if he's got a clean bill of health, of course I want to see him out there. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, BTJ and Trevor Lawrence's, you know, connection, seeing this kid make plays is, like, one of the few things I look for. I actually look forward to about watching Jags games on Sundays right now. But at the same time, I don't want nothing to get him more hurt or something that could possibly linger in the next year. I don't think that's the case, but just hopefully he's, but you know, just hopefully he's okay and he can play. But if not, you know, we got, we got the bye weeks coming up, you know, I mean, the season's practically over anyway. It ain't like, it ain't, it's not like it's life or death if Brian Thomas plays right now. So hopefully they just make the best decision. Now, you see what the video is titled because I, I got a theory floating around. Now Gabe Davis, he was hurt again. He allegedly got hurt in the game, but I didn't. See, but I didn't see it. And he was standing around on the sidelines and looked okay. But you know that last drive, he wasn't out there. Like, man, this is what kills me. We were in a single back, two tight end set for the entire last drive, and Trevor Lawrence still found a way with fucking Parker Washington and Tim Jones. Like Tim Jones even caught a pass in this game, which. You know, he was left wide open and caught the easiest pass I'm sure he's ever caught in his entire life, which is very appropriate. And the defense looked like they basically forgot him, which is very appropriate because, you know, I sometimes forget I forget he's even on the roster still. Fucking useless bastard. But, um, yeah, the, you had Tim Jones and Parker Washington as the two receivers, and then they had two tight ends. But, luck but, luckily, Evan, but luckily, we have Evan Ingram and uh, Dr. Strange, which... It's something I've really been pounding the table for to see more two tight end sets because we have two very good tight ends. Like, Evan Ingram's a beast. We know that. But, you know, it, but you know, it can't be expressed enough that Dr. Strange, when he gets opportunities, that motherfucker can ball. Like, I think, like, I think he's very good and very underrated. And you see why he was a second-round pick. So, I actually like the fact that, you know, and even with Evan Ingram healthy, I, I think, you know, our boy Dr. Strange definitely deserves some more targets. Put it that way. But anyway, back to Gabe Davis. Like, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. I haven't seen anything. I don't know what happened. The only thing I remember him doing noteworthy in this game was getting a dumbass false start penalty. That That's literally the only thing I remember Gabe Davis doing in this game. And... I, and, you know, it, it sucks, too, because I actually was pretty excited about this signing. Like, I thought 
it would be pretty good. But, dude, Gabe Davis sucks. Like, I, I don't know how this is possible, but he's like a shit, but he might be a shittier Zay Jones. Like, I, I, I can't believe I'm even saying that, but it is. And I know someone's going to point out, well, what about the time he caught two touchdowns? He dropped two other ones in that same game. So, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm pretty much done with Gabe Davis. But the reason for this is, now, I don't know how true this is, but I heard something saying that the Bucks, that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they actually have interest in Gabe Davis for a couple reasons. Like, one, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans are both hurt, so they obviously need another receiver. And Gabe Davis would be a cheaper option for them because the Bucks are in some cat troubles. And they might not be able to, and they're probably not going to be able to bring Chris Godwin back after this season. Like, if the Bucs were losing right now, he'd be a trade candidate, from what I've heard. Now, if this is true, if this is 100% fact, if there's any, matter of fact, if there's any truth to this whatsoever, just fucking do it. Like, just admit, hey, we fucked up on this one. We'll eat some of the cap because because the reason that they're after Gabe that they could be the Bucks could be after Gabe Davis is because, like I said, he's a cheaper option and they're in some cap trouble and it wouldn't cost that high of a draft pick to get him, and then and then also with trading for him, the Jaguars likely would have to eat some of the salary. But dude, just bite the bullet on the salary, get a draft pick, be done with this bum. I'm sick of him. Get him out of here. I don't want him. Like like. And like I said, it sucks because, you know, he was coming back to Florida. You know, he was all rah-rah, excited to play here, and then just isn't good. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just not good. But then some, but then people are saying, well, now Christian Kurtz has go, gone, and you're talking about trading Gabe Davis. What then? First of all, let's be honest. In Gabe Davis's case, does it really matter that he's on the field? Like, did like did anybody miss Gabe Davis when he was out of the game? I miss Ryan Thomas and Christian Kirk. I didn't miss Gabe Davis. You know, Parker Washington made a couple plays. I thought he was fine. And apparently he can play on the outside too. So, yeah, I'm pretty good if Gabe Davis doesn't come back. So... And also, too, with Christian Kirk out and Parker Washington likely stepping into a slot receiver role, there are two guys on this roster that there are two young receivers who don't get a lot of playing time that I think now at this point, with the Jags being 2-6 and six and playoffs like uh, slim to none, there are two guys the Jaguars need to find out about. They need to find out about Joshua Cephas and Elijah Cooks. Elijah Cooks has been here for a year or two and, you know, has shown some flashes. And Joshua Cephas, he's a highly touted, undrafted rookie. And, you know, it's not going to hurt to see what these guys can do at this point. We know BTJ is the number one. We know, unless something happens with Christian Kirk, that um, Parker Washington's probably going to be the slot receiver. Getting rid of Gabe Davis and seeing what you have in these guys is a good idea. Not to mention if you trade Gabe Davis, the Jags have like, right now with doing nothing, $60 million in cap space, then you could go after a, you could potentially go after a fucking, um, uh, Chris Godwin. Like, could you, ima like, could you imagine BTJ, Chris Godwin, and Parker Washington all in the same offense? That, that would be fucking insane. Especially when we get a competent coaching staff that actually knows what the fuck they're doing. That would be that would be lit. Because there was actually... Because the Jags were actually in on Chris Godwin when he was going to be a free agent before. But then Tampa ended up franchise tagging him and working a deal out. Like, that interest would still be there. Especially if you set ship Gabe Davis' ass off. Which, is anybody really going to be sad? Like, like seriously, is anybody really going to be sad? Like while chat well, like while Trevor Lawrence's cap hit is like under twenty million dollars, that should be that should be a no brainer.
But you may not even have to do that if you can get good production out of one of these young, out of one of these young guys. You gotta see what you have in them. And also, can we send Ronald Darby with them too? Like, my God, he's bad. Like, allegedly, he got hurt yesterday too. Um, I hate to I hate to say it's season. I hate to say I hope it's season ending, but they're not gonna trade him and get him out of my life forever. But you know, <sighs> it is what it is. Like, and this is what kills me about this fucking defense too. Like, when Montez Brown and Tyson Campbell are on the field at the same time, they do a good job. Like you see why like you see why Tyson Campbell was paid. Like they don't like teams don't target him that often. They target whoever's on the other side, which most of the time is Ronald Darby, sorry ass, and it usually works. And then just the defense and just, you know, when we had Montaric Brown and um Tyson Campbell on the field a lot, like that's good. And I think Jarian Jones needs some more playing time too. Like that dude like that dude, um, He's shown me a lot lately. I, I like, especially after that pick, you know, even though he's a Florida State guy, you know, the kid's starting to grow on me a little bit. DeAndre Prince, too. He got to play a little bit and I think did okay. It's just this scheme is so fucking bad and our safety play is fucking atrocious. Like, Antonio Johnson, someone who I've had high hopes, who I had high hopes for, he sucks. I, I, I don't know if he's ever going to get it back. And what the hell happened? And my God, what the fuck happened to Andre Sisco? Like, this guy, the last two years, was one of the best safeties in football. And now he's fucking just ass. I don't know what the hell happened. You would think in a contract year he'd be trying to ball out. Like, there was even a point where I said, you know, maybe we should have paid Sisco before we paid uh, Tyson Campbell. Boy, was I fucking wrong. So, it, it, it sucks to see a fall off of a guy who, like, I really liked and really wanted to be around for the long haul, but it's like, yeah, buddy, you're probably on your way out. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Just shit's, just shit's crazy. But, yeah, but yeah man, uh, that's how, that's how I fit. And, and, but back to the cornerback situation, I think, I think four out of the five have, four out of the five on the current roster have potential. Tyson, well, actually, Tyson Campbell, we know what he is. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the league. I don't care what anybody says. He's that fucking good. He's that dude. We know that. But Monteric Brown has proven to be a capable starter. Jarian Jones, when he plays in man coverage, he can hold his own. And I think DeAndre Prince could, too. So we don't even need to draft a cornerback at, anymore. Like, there literally is there literally is no purpose to Ronald Darby being here. None whatsoever. He's taking up a roster spot and he's taking up money. Get him the fuck out of here. Like I said, like I said, bro, I, I would say I would take a seventh round pick ten years from now just to move on from this piece of shit. But anyway, but anyway, yeah, that, that's how I feel. Like, probably like next week or something, I'll do a whole thing about who potentially could be traded for the Jaguars. But you know, Ronald Darby and Gabe Davis, they're two names I would I'm really high on the hopeful list that they do get traded. But uh, we'll see, man. That's it. That's all, people. This is your boy, Jagging Off. Go, Jags. Do what's all I die. Go.